Hey everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Escalon Book 2. Where we are standing right outside the entrance to uh, Fathomark, apparently. Probably should have started recording after this loading screen. Anyway, uh, you have entered the dungeon of Fathomark again. Right. Long have the people of Mistfall shared this shared tales of this place, yet it has been... Oh, also I forgot to zoom in. There we go. That's why it looked so especially tiny. Anyway, <clears throat> um, yet it has remained nothing but a myth to most. It has been kept hidden deep within the Faroe Mountains, obscured behind a makeshift wall. Whatever dwells down here in this dark abyss was awful enough to warrant sealing it up forever. Right, forever, behind a makeshift wall. If you have ever been sure of something, it is this. Feathermark is not for the inexperienced or unprepared. Right. Um, oh. <laughs> also, it's very dark. I was suddenly acting as if I was unaware of that concept. Okay, so <laughs> that's that's one thing that I wanted to get out of the way. Is um, just make sure that the other corridor was just a dead end. And indeed it was even shorter than I expected. Now I don't think there was anything in here. Nope. And that closes up and you're just trapped. While exploring, gate is closed, preventing you from returning the way you've entered. Well, yes. Um, continue forth in hopes of finding an alternate exit or, I guess, finding some sort of switch to open this up. However, someone died here, apparently, um, leaving us Candesium Dust, which is uh, considered a gem, apparently. Okay. And notice that fact previously. Oops. There we go. Pretty valuable, too. So that's nice, if we make it out of here. Uh, this journal is dusty, and the pages are yellow. It has been many years since it was last used. Most of the pages have been torn out, possibly burned to make a bit of light. What's left is just the first and last page. The Journal of Hammond Baroque. Page 1. I'm thrilled and honored to be selected by the Council of Thermor to explore and map the Dungeon of Feathermark. Oh, is there a map? Maybe that would be helpful. Hmm. Of course, that's one of the pages that he actually tore out to burn. Hmm. Uh, to briefly summarize what I know of this dungeon, it was discovered by Ferroc miners nearly 30 years ago during normal excavating procedures. After strange glyphs were found upon the walls, the miners concluded that these mysterious tunnels must be the home of Orokor and other foul denizens of the Underworld. Um, well, if that is true, those were pretty late-game enemies in the first game, I think. If we... or did we ever... Yeah, no, we we definitely did run into actual Orokor, right? I think, maybe. Or did they just... Did, did people just think that the invaders were actually Orokor and it turned out to be something else instead? Anyway, we'll see, I guess. We will see um, if we run into any enemies and how how much too tough they are. Um, fearing that they may have uh, inadvertently opened a passageway straight to hell itself, the entrance to the dungeon was quickly sealed off. No one spoke of it again, and eventually time transformed these tunnels into rumor and myth. Due to the growing unrest in Thamor, I have been instructed to investigate these forgotten tunnels and report back to the Therish Council. Chancellor Malcolm seems convinced that the Orc were responsible for recent attacks on Therish outposts near the Borderlands, and it is the Council's hope that my findings confirm these suspicions. I've heard from others that there is overwhelming evidence implicating the goblins in these attacks. Right, was it actually goblins instead in the first game? I... I don't know. I don't know. Um, but who am I to argue? The Council is paying me a thousand gold for the survey of the Feathermark dungeon. Mm, doesn't sound like a lot if it's actually this dangerous. Or, you know, as dangerous as everyone seems to assume. Huh. Which I would have gladly done for free. <laughs> right, okay, well. After all, I'm an explorer at heart, and this is what I love to do. I mean, same. However, um, I will say that while exploring for its own sake is absolutely fine, doing so with an additional reward is even better. Um, also, a thousand gold back then, whoever, however long ago this might have been, um, might have been worth more because of inflation, so maybe that was a pretty, pretty good price. Uh, one further note, I have been informed by the foreman of the mine that I will have one week to complete my survey of the dungeon. If I'm not back at the end of the week, the dungeon will be co will be resealed. So to allow normal mining operations to conti continue, the miners are a superstitious bunch and refuse to work while the entrance to Feathermark is unrestricted. I mean, they could have constructed some sort of some sort of uh, like reinforced door rather than just walling it up. So you know, I don't know. Many pages here are missing from the journal. Um, page 32. 
which apparently is the last one. I'm trapped. I can go no further forward in this dungeon, nor can I return to the entrance because of the closed gate. Even if I were to find a way past this gate, the miners would have already fulfilled the duty of resealing the entrance of the dungeon, as my return is now several days past due. So in over a week, this apparently seasoned explorer, well, we don't know how seasoned he was, but uh, he was talking pretty confidently there. Um, he could not make it out, obviously. But also, the sealed door, the door that's sealed behind him, has reopened in the meantime. Hmm. Anyway. Uh, my food and water supplies are exhausted. Oh, I have, I have some supplies with me, so... Uh, that's probably not what's going to kill me. <laughs> it is clear that my fate is sealed. I am to become part of Feathermark forever. I should not be saddened by this destiny, for I am an explorer, and such is the risk... Uh, such are the risks associated with my profession. Well, sure, but... Uh... My only wish is that I could have one more day at my home in Vela to sit on the dock with my pipe and watch the fishermen bring in their evening catch. Sorry, man. Didn't quite work out that way for you. There were there weren't really any clues in there, um, unless they were extremely, like, cryptic. Hello? Did I make it this far before? I'm not sure. I definitely st stopped here, I think. Pretty sure I never went down any of these corridors. So, so I'll just... Pick this one and random. There is blood. There's a closed gate, but also a lever. Uh, could be indicating that there's something trapped behind. Let's save the game, I guess. We did it. I do have the, the hard save to go back to if all else fails. Well, there's certainly nothing alive in here. Huh. Bottle of wine. Some iron working fragments. So just for selling, I think. Oh, an unknown cleric spell. And also explosives. Wait. Why am I so encumbered? Oh, right. Because I was completely... I was totally meaning to drop off my one powder keg uh, before even entering to have more room for stuff. And then I completely forgot. Okay, well, that's, that's fine. Um... That is fine. I can't carry two with me without being encumbered, so that's good. Let's identify the spell. Enchanted weapon. Okay. Read it. I can learn it. But it might actually be... Oh yeah, it's definitely a higher level spell, higher tier spell. Uh, I think there are three tiers of spells. Not sure if uh, if their base cost is two, four, or six, or if this... So basically I'm not sure if this is a second or third tier spell, but it's obviously higher. So I will not be able to cast it at level... Oh yeah, it's also super getting super expensive very fast. So normal spells or first tier spells I can cast at level 3. But this... Yeah, that requires divination skill of 11, which... Uh, okay, currently I have 6, which is including 1 point from the head. So... What about this one? 8, alright. But I can cast level 1. Um, actually, hold, hold on though. What does it even do? Uh, the spell temporarily enchants any weapons placed in the caster's hands or the caster's hands themselves if no weapon is equipped. Okay, that's smart. Enchanted, weapon is, en enchanted weapons deliver a guaranteed additional two points of physical damage. Okay. Um, upon striking a target. That's just a flat two points, not two points per level. Hmm. As well, this enchantment makes common weapons effective against ethereal or supernatural creatures. Right, that was a thing in the first game. There were definitely ghosts that needed... Specific weapons. I don't know if if they needed to be of a specific material, or uh, or if they needed to be magical in some way. Were they just marked as being magical somehow, or did you have to experiment? I don't remember, but there certainly was something like that. Okay, so that's still here in this game apparently. But um, yeah, enchanted weapon is going to help me deal with that. So that's going to be useful. Um. Oh, the spell's duration is 10 rounds per casting level, okay. So that's what improves with with a uh, higher level. Well, I mean, I can only cast it at level 1. But that's better than nothing. Uh, in fact, it is readied. Okay. Does it show anything? No, it doesn't display it here. It does display the extra 2 damage. 
Although, wait a second. Oh, my... In okay, the encumbrance is already reducing my stats, I think. Yeah, because normally I should be at 20. Also, 7 to hit instead of... Was it 5? Okay. Well, I have one explosive with me. Not what I was planning to do, but... Since they provide them here, they might be necessary to progress. No enemies so far, of course. Also, I probably don't want to be using Enchanted Weapon as my go-to spell. Okay. Hello. Suspicious liver. Hmm. Huh. First I thought this was a door, but this is actually just yeah, one of these weird um, tapestries. I guess my, uh, those are probably the weird glyphs, strange glyphs that they were talking about. Can I interact with those at all? Hmm. Okay. So just, uh, just an empty room? Oh. Well. I might also run out of torches, although, well, six torches is quite a few. Also, I don't technically need one in here. There's an open door, but there's also a lever that closes the door? That, how does that make sense? I cannot see past it. Well, oh, hold on, there's a trap there. Standing right next to it, right? <clears throat> okay, how bad is it? Uh, wait, how bad? Oh, wow, I, th I think I was at like negative 280 health, if I saw that correctly. Um... Well, okay. Yeah, that is definitely not something I can just tank anytime soon. But also, I mean, it must be a super high level trap, right? If it deals like over, way over 300 damage to me. Um, I mean, I, I have some, I have not, not terrible perception, I would, I would have said until just now. Um... We do have... No, we, we don't have the uh, spot hidden, or whatever it's called, uh, skill, which would further help. But we also only have one point in Skullduggery, and I think that's that one's governed by Dexterity, and maybe something else, maybe Concentration, maybe also Perception. But, uh, yeah, it does not seem like my character is just physically, <laughs> mathematically able to... Um, to detect this trap, which is unfortunate. Huh. Also, this lever here seems completely pointless. Unless it does something else. I mean... Um, oh, you, what you can do. Okay, hold on. I mean, that doesn't help me if I, if I can't deal with the trap. But, um... Wait, what? <laughs> that's... that's derp. That was not the correct inventory slot. So, what you can do... Wait, what? Um, oh, why, what is wrong with me? Okay, that, that was interesting, it, that it shows the explosion radius. So yeah, what you can do is you can uh, throw throwables at levers to activate them. That was, I think that was the case in the first game, but the game also tells you via the, uh, which one was it? Right, F4 for helpful tips. So one of these is... Um, that you can do that, so yeah. So, so technically, I could, if I could deal with the trap, I could stand on the other side and maybe throw, um, throw a rock or something at the lever to close it, and maybe trigger something on the other other side. That would be a pretty um, neat thing to do. However, uh, I don't think I can throw something at the no. I cannot throw anything at a, a floor tile to try and trigger this remotely. Could I maybe? Since I did provide explosives. You can't place that there. That does, thankfully, not spring the trap. Although, maybe arguably it should. Okay, just for the sake of experimenting. Oh, wait. That's interesting. Does a ranged weapon always trigger those? That's why I've never failed to actually finish, finish one of those off with a rock. Or any other thrown weapon. That is really good to know. Um... But the trap is still there, right? Yes, and I was absolutely at minus 282 health there. So, uh, 
Huh. Okay, so blowing that up was not the answer. So I'm gonna try to rescue that torch while I can. Yeah, it's it seems like there's just no way for me. Oh, hold on, let me put that back on. This is just a distraction. Is there some other way past this? I mean, it doesn't look like there is, unless you randomly can blow up some wall tile, but nothing looks cracked around here. No, definitely does not. Hmm. Okay, well, I mean, I guess I guess I'm gonna double check the rest of the walls. But uh, if that is not the solution, I mean, I did look re look around here and nothing appeared breakable in this room. Um. Yeah, so if if that's not, I'm, I'm not gonna try randomly blowing up uh, some section of wall that doesn't look special. That's that's just insane, and that I can't imagine that being the solution. Oh wait, this one, this one does look cracked right next to where the guy died. Hmm, could that be? Could it be that easy? Oh, also, what I didn't try. Hold on, let me try that first. The thought crossed my mind, but I don't think I did that. Right, yeah. So the gate is this gate is open. But what if this lever actually opens the entrance? That would actually, I mean, that would make no sense. If that's the solution, then this guy had no no reason to die here in more than a week. Yeah, no, okay, that's that's not close. That would have been a little bit silly. Of course, also, oh, there's another great wall there. All right. Um, that's fine. Let's let's try this one first, just to see. Um, and put this. Oh, it's good to. Oh, never mind. So you just deal more damage than expected. Considering, well, I mean, it's supposed to be nine plus three, but yeah, I mean, I must have dealt more than that damage to the. Uh, to the barrel previously to blow it up in one go with one rock. So it's weird. Maybe just ranged weapons deal extra damage to explosive barrels. So this one didn't clearly not blow up. So I'll, I'll try that one as well. But um, I kind of doubt this is the solution. Oh. Huh. Okay. Back here. Um, well, Re-equip that. Should be correct. I well. This is as far as I can, as close as I can get to that wall. So. Okay, and this time, one rock was enough, and it did not blow up this wall. Kind of what I was expecting at this point. So, I mean, I did not try to just directly blow up this gate, should I? You know what? I don't expect that to be so be the solution. And if it isn't, then I'm really out of ideas. It seems like I absolutely need that you're actually re absolutely required to have a character with a certain minimum perception and or um, spot hidden skill. Plus, I guess, the um, the required skill duggery uh, to, to, to actually disarm the trap, even if you can't spot it. Or else you're just screwed. Or you could be just high enough level and I don't know, just healthy enough, tanky enough to tank that damage. But that's a lot of damage to tank. I don't know if there are other ways to maybe lessen the blow. Okay, yeah. As expected, that didn't work. I mean, am I missing something? Am I not thinking of something that I could theoretically do? Some interaction here? Some other option that I'm not considering? Um... Because I'm officially out of ideas now. Yeah, I don't know. It's, that's a strange one. I was totally expecting to run into into some enemies I can't deal with, or you know, just something of that sort. But um, just a trap that you that one shots you and that you 
can't even detect at my current level. That's not what I expected. And the weirdness of that, of this fact, could there be a lever on the other side that I could throw something at? I mean, I, I suppose there could be, but I would probably also be seeing it. Yeah. Wait. Can you... <laughs> but... So I put out the torch. Then I put this on. It might have been giving me the effect before. Yeah, I still can't see anything in the dark here. And I would... If there were a leather here or something other... Something else interactive, it would be highlighting, I think. That would have been clever if there were actually another lever on the other side that you can use to disarm the trap. But that does not appear to be the case. Well, okay. That means that I'm... That I am actually officially out of ideas now. Which means that I will have to reload and just save this for later. Which is... Definitely a bummer. I wonder... I mean, there was a very explicit warning, of course. The game did, did tell me explicitly that, you know, this is not for the unprepared. So, basically, it uh, it all but told me that I'm too low level and that this is a, a late game challenge or something. It's it's also, the, the way it, this is set up, it sounds like it's completely optional, but who knows. Maybe it might be related to some later quest. Maybe you're going to be sent here some, at some point later in the game. It's absolutely possible. But it, it does... It does seem like, like an optional challenge to me. <clears throat> now, am I wrong in, in thinking that there, that it would have been better to, to literally put that that impossible trap or that super high level trap outside of the actual dungeon itself before the gate that slams shut? Uh, either that or if there is any fighting in this dungeon, and there might not be. This might be purely mechanical difficulty, purely mechanical traps and, and obstacles to overcome. But if there is fighting later on, um, they could have put a single enemy of the appropriate level or uh, of the, you know, of a level indicative of the overall difficulty of this place outside to tell the player instead of, well, to, to show the, to the player instead of just telling. Um, that's kind of my point, I guess. Um, how tough of a challenge he's dealing with. Because the, the game, you know, the, the text pop-up just telling me that this is challenging or that is that this is too dangerous and that I should not proceed. Um, is is all fine and dandy, but obviously I could have I could arrive here. A player could arrive here at vastly different levels, right? So maybe by the time someone comes here, they might very well be capable of dealing with the, with the challenge, or maybe they're like me and are utterly unprepared, apparently. So you know, just literally putting an enemy there and giving the player the chance to to attack them and see that they only have like. A, 5% hit chance or so, and that the the enemy almost one shot them in one in one hit um, would be much more much more useful as an indicator. Anyway, um, that's just theoretical, and it, again, it might be quest related, it might not be optional, and maybe I'm just overthinking things. Maybe and, and maybe maybe the, there is a solution to this that I that I could do. Maybe the trap is just a red herring, and there's actually something else to do. But I can't think of it right now, so I am going to stop <laughs> rambling and lamenting. And just uh, reload to before I got trapped here, because thankfully I did not trap myself by saving off my only save file inside this place. That would uh, be really unfortunate if that happened to someone. Um, yeah, and I'm just gonna do other things. So, see you in a second. Okay, so back outside. Well, still inside the cave, though. The the old mine, I guess, um, with my original explosive. Yeah, that's uh, a bit disappointing. That certainly was not the way that I expected to to be unable to to continue. Obviously, with the warning there, I was well. I was was just imagining running into some unbeatable enemy rather than just a trap that my skill isn't high enough to even detect. That was kind of a kind of anticlimactic, kind of disappointing in that in that way. Although, you know, either way, I would have been stopped, but at least with a, an enemy too powerful to to defeat, I don't know, that, that feels like there is, that, that leaves the illusion, at least, that there is 
theoretically a way to, to maybe, with a lot of luck, win in the end, or, you know, whittle the enemy down, or just run past, something like that. But with a trap, literally literally placed in a, in a you know, in a bottleneck, a one-tile <laughs> bottleneck, that you have to step on, even if you, if you have, as a player, um, know that it's there. And that is going to absolutely to just one-shot you, no matter what you do. That is just, I don't know, it doesn't feel great. So, um, the outcome is the same, but psychologically it's different. Anyway, um, we are back in this place. However, okay, so there are a few things. Obviously, our next main objective is to um, reach Port Kudad and continue the main quest there. Also, uh, deliver the medicine to the dying boy, who I hope is, is doing fine. Uh, what I will do is I'm going to place this explosive here. That's not what I meant to do. Um, place the explosive here to, uh, you know, just to have quick access to it, so I can just fast travel to this place. Actually, I could have fast traveled as soon as I exited out of the cave, huh? Well, anyway. <clears throat> we have talked to you. Uh, I do want to do some shopping. Okay, so, for Kudat is the, main, the, the next main thing. But there are a few things in my back path, basically. So, uh, actually, right outside the village. In fact, apparently I've started exploring down the road just a little bit. I don't know if I ever walked here. I want to see if this is literally the same map. Yeah, it is. Okay. So, I'm here. Um, this up here is where I found the dying messenger or a courier who was carrying the the medicine for the boy. Okay, so this map here is unexplored, but I think everything... Well, not everything, but the map immediately to the left is fully explored. Um, as well as most other maps around. Let's see here. Let's go on and we're at Mistfell. Right. So directly north of the lake. Uh, below the mountains, basically all the way up to the coast. However, there is an, an area. I think, yes, it should be basically this little... Not quite a peninsula, just this, this area um, south of the Farrock River that I did not explore. I think that should actually be just uh, just a few steps away from the from that uh, marker fast travel location on the other side of the mountains. So that is an that is a place that I'm planning to explore. Uh, then the Wolfenwood, I guess, uh, is another one. And I have been informed via a comment, actually. Oh, thank you for that that there is actually something I can do about the Iron Pool Dam, so I'm going to return there as well to check that out, and we'll see how much of a place, how much of a thing that is. Also, I, I don't think I've ever taken the time to look at this zoomed-in version of, of the in-game map in more detail. Huh. I, for example, I don't remember the Lorewich Tower from that, uh, from that out-of-the-game uh, JPEG map that I saw. I wonder if that was there, and I just... Don't remember it, or if there may be some are some details here that are, that were late, added later. Oh, more places as well. Edon. I'm not sure if that's considered part of Mistfell or part of um, I think this Baria, where my character is canonically from. Copper Vein Rift. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Since we have found a, a map of another province, I guess entirely, right? Which certainly suggests that. Uh, we will get here, or else why would the game provide a detailed map of this place, right? But does that also mean that we will get to explore every single one of these provinces? I mean, Baria, for example. Oh, okay, the tower is definitely in this in this large version of the map, so... Yeah, anyway. Um, I mean, this looks very barren, as the name kind of suggests. There really isn't a whole lot here, so I guess going there wouldn't be very useful. There are also not very many locations in Amirath, so maybe it really is just a matter of fast traveling there via boat at some point and not actually walking all the way through Thermor. I guess we'll see. Um, yeah, maybe these 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 lands are really the only ones that are uh, settled enough, civilized enough to, to even, you know, provide locations to explore. Anyway, um, why did I get distracted so much? Right, I wanted to, while I'm here, uh, check out this little village, which I think consists of literally four different buildings. Oh no, actually it's it's five buildings, but one of them is the the, the bungalow that you uh, that's part of the inn. So this was 
Wolfman Magics, right. Hello. Ah, Harpen. You see a Slenderman, a Slenderman, not the Slenderman, with dark eyes arranging potion bottles on a shelf. As you approach, he greets you warmly. Ah, oh, welcome, Traveler, to Wolfsbane Magics. My name is Harpen. I have a small store, but I stock a lot of quality merchandise. So, what are you looking for? Well, um, no, no option to talk about, to ask for quests or anything, but we can take a look at this. Compass is an amulet with extra cartography, okay. Um, that's neat, but obviously I prefer having the, um, the skill and having that slot used for something more combat related. And uh, dungeon and damage, that's what we already have. Uh, what do we have for spells? Compress atmosphere. Oh wow, that's expensive. That is definitely a higher tier spell. If I ever saw one. Reveal map? Okay, that seems yeah, that's a the tier one. I don't think I've seen one seen that one before though. Uh flesh boil, detox, uh sunder flesh. Wait, oh that's okay. Sunder flesh. Sounds like the higher level version. So probably the tier two version of uh, Flesh Boil. Well, I mean, I might be able to afford this after selling a bunch of stuff, but um, yeah, I might actually not want to spend that much money. Because there, I know that there are skill trainers in this game for various skills, maybe even all the skills, and I don't know how much they allow you to train and how expensive they are, but I feel like I definitely want to uh, to get some skills that way, if I can. So, um, yeah, I might want to keep my money together a bit more than I have been. In fact, that, well, I mean, especially the one the one thing that, that I regret the most, really the, the only, the one thing that I regret uh, spending money on is the, uh, the Animal Rage Amulet. Yes, it is a nice bonus, but, you know, and I absolutely was not guaranteed to find one literal minutes after buying one, but that was probably way too expensive for what it was. But, well, it's too late to... to... Uh, uh, you know, cry about that now. Anyway, lore, leather, sk oh, leather skin. Also, a low tier spell, which um, I'm assuming just gives you extra armor. Enchanted weapon. Oh, there it is. Hey there, buddy. Um, detox, nimbleness. Also higher level nimbleness. Hmm, maybe extra dexterity or something else. Could be dexterity. Could be maybe specifically lock picking or and or trap disarming bonus or maybe dodging maybe it's a combat related spell who knows entangle we have that one grape diggers flame reveal map draw water and another draw water okay so we've seen those potions that i haven't really been um i don't know paying attention to a whole lot of visibility uh, predator, predator side oh yeah did i call it cat eyes at some point or is the spell actually called Cat Eyes? Pretty sure this is... Um, this just gives you Intravision. Or, you know, Heat Vision, specifically. As in, you know, Predator side. Um, that was definitely in the first game. Um, Keen Sight, probably Hit Chance. Ogre Strength, probably Strength. Duh. Uh, Restoration, not entirely sure. Um, might be like, a, like in Diablo, where the purple potion is literally a, a combination of the red and blue mana and health potions, and this one restores both to a lesser extent. Um, or it might give you, like, regen over time. Mana potion... Fortify mana. Wait. That's a darker blue? What would fortify mana do? Like, temporary mana, max mana increase? Or a small permanent mana increase? But it doesn't seem expensive enough, valuable enough, to be a permanent bonus. Hmm. Lamp oil. Interesting. I mean, we have a lamp, or a lantern, that has some sort of fuel gauge. I have been wondering if, uh, if you just if you can just repair it to refill it, or how you would do that. Lamp oil obviously suggests that you would use that somehow, but... Oh, actually, it's a, I mean, it's considered a reagent, and you can just open the alchemy window whenever. So maybe it's just, just a matter of using the lantern as a vessel. And the lamp oil as a reagent, maybe two units of lamp oil. I think you always need to put two ingredients. Maybe you don't. Maybe you need, don't need to fill both slots. That's interesting. Okay. I mean, obviously, I have really not been using the lantern at all. Maybe I will at some point. Maybe I want to have a bit more of a light radius. But so far, torches have been okay, and I've been mostly just avoiding the dark 
of course, so it hasn't really become a problem like that. Okay, anyway, um, what I want to do before I do any shopping is uh, put my hat on. That's one thing I did remember. And I want to identify some things, right? So this is Flask of Toxic Aura. Okay, it's another kind of thrown weapon. I don't even remember where I got this one. Hmm. That's another Zen Club. That's what I expected because it looks like this. It's Eyes of the Dire Links. Hmm. Value only 20. Wait. Oh, right. Robot the Healer, Pine Buckler, Adamantium Ore. Hmm. Meaty Spider Legs. Yep. Okay, so that's just food. I mean, obviously it's food. Ugh. Uh, jacket Stones. Okay, so higher tier stones, indeed. Um, dealing four base damage as opposed to three. Um, for the walk ring, unknown. It's a small emerald. Okay, we have an extra scroll as well. So we have some things to sell here. Let's see. Um, okay, so the most expensive scrolls here or, or spells cost 772 down from 800 with the head on. That's, you know, a bit of a of an improvement, but obviously we don't really need that. Oh, you don't buy that or that, I guess. Thrown potions, thrown weapons are considered weapons instead of potions. I've actually been thinking about just getting rid of the, the demon oil as well. Because I don't really want to be using thrown weapons offensively. I don't think I want to really invest in those. Eyes of the Darlings, yeah, I'm not I'm just not gonna do Um Just not gonna do alchemy. I have to draw a line somewhere, and I guess that's where I decided to do that. Alright, uh, so that's just food. But I think I also saw a blacksmith. Well that certainly looks like a blacksmith. Uh, Hunter's Outfitter. Okay. Uh, what? Did I... Oh, I accidentally clicked on... on the torch. Whoops. Didn't mean to steal that. Sorry. Thankfully no one saw that. I, I'm assuming that taking torches from, from sconces is considered theft and will make pe people angry. <clears throat> um, Aura. You see a woman in sooty clothing walking about in the small smithing shop. Hello, Traveler. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Hello, Traveler. Welcome to the tiny village of Everdale, and thanks for stopping to see me. I call my place the Hunter's Outfitter, because I have everything you'll need for spending a week hunting in Wolfenwood. What can I get for you? Well, I guess I would like to see your inventory, but you have some, th some more things to talk about, including uh, asking for a quest. So let's do that first. You want to earn some gold? Sure. Yeah, well, yes, gold. Yeah, I, actually, I do need gold, but also experience. Sure, I can give you something to do. I often will go down to the Faro Caves to look for bits of scrap metal. Okay. No, I was gonna say, didn't I find scrap metal? But that was in in Fathomark, behind the gate. So, well, a few weeks ago, I was scouting around in there, and I found a nugget of adamantium ore. Well, I I did too, apparently. Although I don't remember where. Good good quality stuff too. Unfortunately, I was chased out there by some spiders, and I dropped the nugget. Hmm. I guess I was just somewhere in the spider caves then. Um. If it was, if it is the same nugget. Oh, huh, interesting that I. It's not. Well, I guess items never are explicitly called quest items. So I definitely could have sold this one. Good thing I didn't. Um, yeah. Okay, anyway. Um, and, uh -huh. where, where did I stop? Unfortunately, I was chased out there by some spiders and, and dropped the nugget as I was running. I'd love to get that nugget back. It is actually not worth much in its raw, unprocessed form, but I'm one of the few people who can successfully melt, smelt the ore and separate the adamantium from the junk minerals. And then it becomes very valuable. So here's my offer. I'll give you a couple of hundred gold pieces. A couple of hundred? Okay. If you can locate that lump of adamantium ore and bring it back here to me. Well, you have a deal? I'll be back soon with your nugget. In fact, I already have it. <laughs> Spiders, you say. Not my favorite. Don't like the dark much either. I'll pass. Not an um, unreasonable stance, but obviously. I finally found, finally found your adamantium ore there. 750 XP, not bad, and 200 gold. Okay, pretty pretty solid. Definitely more than I would have gotten for selling it. Uh, that's great. After I get it refined, I'll be able to forge it into a very nice dagger. Uh, could you maybe consider making it an axe? And then I might be interested in taking that off your hands. Hmm. 
Ara takes the, the ore from your hand. As per my half of the deal, here's 200 gold pieces. Thanks. Um, what can you tell me of Everdale? Our small village of Everdale has been here for quite some time, actually. But it has never grown much beyond the few buildings you see now. We're little more than a rest stop for travelers heading to and from Port Kudad. Very few people who pass through ever decide to stay permanently and call this place their home. Years back, Everdale was a mining outpost when the Faro Caves were still producing gemstones. Those days are long past, though. The Faro Caves? Yes, the mountains that you see just east of here is... The mountains are the Faro Range. There is an old cave system running through it that used to produce quite a few gemstones, but now the tunnels are just filled with wolves, spiders, and outlaws. Uh, actually, I don't think there were any wolves inside the caves. But details. No one goes down there anymore. I would recommend staying clear of that place, unless you enjoy gemstone hunting while dealing with menacing things that lurk in the dark. Well, I mean, honestly, I kind of do, but uh, while traveling through there, I only encountered, like, or, or discovered maybe two hidden caches of gemstones. Well, I say caches, I think they each had one very low level, not very valuable gemstone in them. Hmm. Who knows how many more I missed. There might be some more valuable stuff in there, and I might just not have enough spot hidden and or perception which uh, apparently is something I want to invest in if I if I want to ever be able to explore Feathermark. Because, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what, what kinds of character levels you, you can reach in this game. Um, but I kind of doubt that, I, that I'll ever have, like, close to 400 hit points total. That seems a bit unreasonable. Uh, unrealistic. So, I guess my only my only other option, unless, uh, again, unless there, there actually is a quest reason to go there and maybe some some other uh, tools that I'm that I'm gonna have later that allow me to pass that trap but uh, it certainly seems like I will have to you know just get better at detecting and disarming traps if I want to be able to explore that place at all so uh, yeah I probably want to invest in that in the long run anyway um yeah not sure how how viable it is to, to actually return to or you know go through the uh, the Faro caves and just you know, meticulously search all the walls for more of those hidden gemstones. Like, I mean, I guess there could be something really good hidden somewhere, but who knows. Anyway, not not for the time being, anyway. Uh, what can you tell me of Wolfenwood Forest? Not much, to be honest. Everdale lies on the northeastern corner of the forest, and I rarely take the road west. The forest gets its name from the high population of wolves that dwell within, and while they can be quite dangerous, most travelers are fine if they stay on the main road. Do not wander the narrow trails through the woods, or you're likely to end up as dinner for a hungry pack of red wolves. Well, I mean, I can deal with those okay-ish. And they're definitely worth hunting down for their pelts and for them for their 100 XP each. So I'm definitely going to do that. Anyway, let's actually finally take a look at your inventory, though. Um, I am actually still looking for, for uh, bronze stuff. Not iron. Tempered steel plated belt, okay. Tinker's gloves, plus one to repair, though. Tinker, well, I guess. Um, ooh, steel, so leather, light armor, four armor. That is kind of expensive, though. Light armor, iron studded vest for two. I think that's about the same as I have. Oh, that's also light armor. That looks like a proper suit of armor. Uh, and it's also four armor. Wow. Merchants cost 636 with a discount. Wait. Yeah, okay. That is expensive. Um... Wow, and currently I have one, one armor. That would be an, a very nice upgrade. I mean, even the the pants would be a pretty, pretty considerable upgrade. Three extra points of armor for over 600 gold, though. As I was just saying earlier, I, I generally don't want to be spending so much gold until I know what kinds of prizes to expect from from skill trainers. And I'm, I mean, if I'm going to find those anywhere, it's going to be in the in the large port city of Kudad, right? I mean, I'm, I'm saying large as if I've been there, but I'm expecting that to be larger than the two settlements, the, su the two villages that I've seen before. And I'm certainly expecting a good number of NPCs there. So maybe we'll eventually find some skill trainers there. Yeah, anyway, I mean, I would, I'm very tempted to get this, but at the same time, I don't think it's reasonable. Copper, iron, and bronze helm. That one's not that expensive. And I am still looking for copper stuff. Hmm. No axes uh, other than throwing axes. No 
other chopping weapons. Okay, well, let's uh, do some selling first. So we can sell this. We can sell the Pine Buckler. Yeah, even if I do start using shields eventually, this one is not a very good one. I mean, okay, I'm, I'm making some, some decent money here, especially if I just go ahead and sell these explosives. I suppose they could, they might come in handy, but in actual combat, I don't know, we'll, hmm. I mean, my, my the other normal throwing weapons, the non-explosive throwing weapons, what the heck. Um, since I don't have the skill for them, um, they're probably going to be very use quite useful, uh, quite useful, no, uh, quite useless in actual combat because I'm just not going to hit anything. With the explosives, uh, especially now that I that I have accidentally learned that they actually display their explosive radius, uh, even as you're readying to throw them, I wonder if those will always hit things. I don't know, maybe I should be holding on to them, especially the demon oil that's... Well, I mean, I sold it now, so it's too late. But, oh, also... Um, don't need two different types of rocks, I think. I guess I'm going to sell the lower level ones, the normal stones. Um, expecting to find more jagged stones as the game progresses, right? Because, I guess over time, more or higher level loot is going to be generated. So, might as well keep those around. All right, uh, so we have this gem to sell, even though it's only worth 15. Uh, meaty spider legs. Actually, let's just eat one of those. Wow, they're filling. Uh, I guess I need to be hunting down more spiders. Also, there's a well right here, so... I didn't really need to use the water for my water skin, but... Also, it doesn't matter, of course. <clears throat> okay, so yeah, spiders. Wow. Nasty, but definitely worth worthwhile. And it's also getting dark. Hmm. That's okay, though. I'm gonna do a little bit of fast traveling. So, um... Eight gold. Right. Oh yeah, I never did return to you. Well, I, I did see his inventory, and I actually bought... Right, the chronometer, and... I mean, I don't know how useful that's going to be. And it's also actually kind of heavy at five pounds. I don't know. Um, I guess the, the only time when, when it's ever going to matter is when it's cloudy, so you can see the, the rough indicator of, of time of day. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's probably really not very very necessary to have, but I might as well keep it around. But it's certainly something that I can consider tossing um, if I ever really really need to pick so something up and I'm otherwise over-encumbered. Um, yeah. Anyway. right. But we, d we also bought the, the extra maps from this guy. Don't think that his uh, inventory has updated in the meantime. So anyway, we did that now. Um, am I forgetting anything? Yes. I'm forgetting to put that back on. But I just remembered, so I'm, I didn't forget. Hmm. Anyway, uh, we have some more pigs that are not probably going to be very useful. Because um, my skill is too low to really really make much use of them. Um, so I'm not, not prioritizing getting more at the time. I am going to fast travel to the Ferroc Monolith to see if I was correct. I don't think I ever actually crossed this transition here, so... Right, that puts me here. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Just on the other side of the... of the river. Right, this is actually... Wait, was there... Let me, let me just remind myself. You know what, that's... Yeah, okay. Literally where I just came from. Okay. That was kind of silly. I should probably be resting. Just to pass the night. Okay, well, there's a, an outlaw, an outlander. I do have a minus two hit. But so do they, so... Okay, well, that worked out nicely. No loot, unfortunately.
No loot from you either. Wow. Stingy bastards. I guess I'm just gonna... I'm gonna camp. Sure. Just for the sake of improving visibility for myself. And my viewers, of course. Oops. Definitely saw someone else wandering up here by this plundered building, ransacked building. Come here. Hmm. Oh, it certainly doesn't feel like I have better hit chance. Although, technically I should. It's just a normal outlander, yeah, okay. Just getting unlucky and... Oh, oh those look like they might actually be bronze boots. I guess I never did buy those, uh, buy that bronze helmet, huh? Okay, you're gonna have your flesh boil. 30 gold pieces, I'll take it. Hello. Oops. Come on, why? How do I keep this clicking? That's just silly. Okay, a ring that looks like that damage increasing ring that I already have. No message about the uh, about this body here. Okay, well. Let's go up to Vine Heal. Well, we can sell that at least. Oh, that's also unlocked. Hmm. Unexpected. Uh, draw water. Just a normal unintended ring. Some stuff, though, to possibly sell my. I mean, to definitely sell. Possibly for good money. Hello? Anything? Anyone? No? Oh, wait, can I cross this? I can. Okay, good. Although, it turns out that this tiny island here is completely empty. Well. Alright, just filling in some more empty ocean on the map, because reasons. Okay, yeah, and we have seen the other shore, for the other the shore of this of this river. Because up here is the, the back entrance. One of the back entrances. One of the I guess just one of the three entrances of the Faro Caves. Nice, nice, more loot. Okay. Drop me all the loot bags. Oh I don't know why I waited one extra turn there. It's fine. This guy's are Not a problem. Okay, those are just more normal stones, copper short sword. Peasant blouse, not useful. 26 gold, that looks like a bronze helm, so good thing I didn't buy one. An unknown elemental spell and an unknown axe, but it uh, looks like a pretty low level one. Let's just do a little bit of healing and a lot of identifying. Bronze hand axe, okay, good. Um, actually, yeah, that's only worth 30. It is not a throwing weapon, it's a regular weapon, a cleaving weapon. I'll put that down there. There's a bronze half helm. Absolutely holding on to that. These are bronze chain boots. Nice. Okay, so it's heavy armor. Yes. I mean, I guess metal armor is always going to be heavy armor. So there's that. Blood Bloodlust ring is exactly what we have. Hmm. How much are two points of dodge doing for me? I think it's literally 1% dodge chance per point. Wouldn't I be better off having an extra point of damage? I mean, it is only one extra point of damage, but... Uh, and I definitely would prefer um, bonus to hit chance over damage. But I think... This is ultimately more useful to me. The occasional dodge is nice when it happens. And I'm... If it's not too expensive, I'm gladly gonna pay a trainer to give me that spell, to, 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 to give me that skill to just unlock it. But I don't, I don't think it's gonna be. I don't think it's valuable enough to, to actually, like spend the three skill points or spend an inventory slot just to give me, giving the, the dodge skill. Uh, reveal map. Okay, well, so nice to have. That's that is a bronze longsword and it is more valuable. But um, it's a bronze hammer. Lots of bronze stuff. Divine heal. Nothing else that needs uh, needs uh, identifying. No. Okay, yeah, but I'm I'm assuming that... Well, first of all, I don't know how many bronze items I need. Um, apparently, I do need more than just boots. Um, I don't know if the weapon is even part of it. It might just be armor, but you know, just in case, I'm going to keep a bronze weapon around. And I'm 
assuming that it doesn't matter what type, just that it is made of bronze. So I'm just gonna go, you know, keep the cheapest one and sell the other ones for more profit. That should be okay, right? Seems reasonable enough. Okay, that was most of my mana just for exploring. Uh, exp Why do I keep saying exploring when I mean identifying? I don't know. Ouch. Ouch. Okay, more loot. Hemp jerkin, another item that looks like a bronze axe. Wow. Okay, well, they were very generous with their loot. Scroll less. I'm kind of... Kind of hurting here, okay. It's fine. Any more cave entrances? Clouds are approaching. Looks like rain is imminent. Great. Thankfully, it looks like we're just about done with this place. In fact, uh, yeah, we are. Okay, that means that I can... Right, I'm not forgetting anything? No. So I'm actually going to fast travel back to East Willow. Right here. Um... Is there anything else to identify? Yes, actually, there there is. I might not have enough mana to identify everything, though. It's an iron stiletto. Well, it's just a stiletto, just a, basically a, a dagger. A fancy fancy word for dagger. So, even if it's iron, it's not going to be... not particularly worth... Um, valuable. Um, Ron's hammer is... Oh, actually, wait. Did I...? Yes, I did. Bronze hand axe. That's the same as we had before. And this is also the same as we had before. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, I mean, all of this stuff that I just found should be good to sell for some extra money. So that's nice. Um, that is nice. And I'm going to do that off camera. And I suppose I'm going to head over to the Iron... Something... What was it called? Iron what? Dam? No, what's it called? Iron Pool Dam. Right. And, uh, in fact, past that and... Uh, if I understood correctly, I need to talk to Minus again, and he might be able to help me with uh, making progress in that indoor section of the dam. So uh, hopefully, I'll be able to just do that. Huh? Oh, didn't mean to do that. Uh, so yeah, that's that's one thing. And depending on how, on how much there is to do and how long that takes, we might um, do that and as, and also start exploring or maybe finish exploring the. Uh, the Wolfenwood Forest. And then we'll finally be able to actually make our way toward Port Kudad. So, uh, yeah. So much uh, for the little preview for next time. Uh, for the time being, I thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and I shall see you real soon. Bye-bye.